All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the O's Talk. Today we're going to be speaking with Halogen, one of uh, the contestants in the Mania World Cup 4-Key Tournament. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm actually really happy to be here. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, been kind of a bit of a long day, but hopefully we'll be able to get through this. Uh, we also have Deadbeat with us, as always. How you doing, Deadbeat? I'm doing pretty good. All right, so we had a pretty exciting match last uh, weekend. Uh, we're kind of coming off of it today. Uh, very exciting stuff. Uh, we'll kind of get into that a little bit later, I do think. But um, uh, for first off, we're going to go with our basic questions. So how did you actually find out about Osu Halogen? It's actually interesting because I've had my account here for well over six years and the only reason why I found it is because I had started playing Elite Beat Agents, which is, you know, very synonymous to this game. And I had started playing the standard mode. I was god awful at it, but I tried sticking with it. And then I actually ended up making a return back when I found out that they had added a Mania mode and the rest is history, really. I see, I see. So, um... When you originally made that account, seeing as it's been uh, quite an older account, could you uh, do you mind for the viewers giving your um, uh, user ID number? Like uh, mine's uh, what is it six four? No, what's this? What is it, Deadbeat? You know it before I do. What yours or his? Mine. Like um, uh, for example, isn't it like six three four two or something like that? Six three four seven. Yeah, there we go. So, what what's your user ID number? So, how that gives us a good uh, idea of how old you actually are, like at least account creation wise. Man, before I give mine, just gotta say you're one of the original originals, huh? Having such a user ID that low. Yeah, um, I actually started like the moment I found it back before I could even connect to the IRC. Like I was still playing the game, and um, I didn't really get to play it for too much. I messed around with it for about a year before I actually started talking to people at all. Yeah, and mine would have been uh, 169992. Ah, okay. So you're pretty old, but still definitely during one of the major influxes of OS. Probably when it was uh, Don't Stop Me Now, it probably just gotten released and that we saw like a huge influx. That was from, a good map. Uh, it was a good map, uh, but that's where we saw our first real big peak and then... Bad Apple gave us another really big peak, and oh boy. Thank you, Thermal, <laughs> for that masterpiece. Oh yes, yeah, such a beautiful map. Anyways, um, so we've kind of talked about this in, um, uh, during some of the World Cups on commentary, if people paid into that, but I'm not, or will paid attention to that. But have you played any other rhythm games aside from O's and its game modes? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've been playing rhythm games for a really, really long time actually. It's been almost 11, 12 years since I first touched one. So I mean, I've played, you know, all the way back from Dance Dance Revolution 6 Mix, I believe was the first version I touched, and I pretty much rode that. Then I started playing in the groove, pump it up, I managed to touch a whole bunch of other games like 2DX, Poppin', Guitar Freaks, Romania, just pretty much everything you can think of. Uh, I've had at least a little bit of exposure to it. Oh wow, a he's little like me, bit. Deadbeat. He's a like little me. bit. He's like touched everything. <laughs> I mean, but aside from me, he's probably actually good at it. Which, I mean, I got a lot of knowledge on a lot of music games, but I can't sit there and say I was great at all of them. No, there's only a few that I actually really excelled at, and uh, Os isn't even one of them anymore. Um, Step Mania, the original. Um, uh, I guess you could say I kind of excelled at Flash Flash Revolution, same song and dance, it's just, to be good there, they had some really weird delays, uh, especially when you started off, um, nothing was timed right there, it was pretty Yeah, they have, a, they have a lot of legacy maps that they kept from when the game was uh, very built very early on, and that was just yeah. a whole, uh, whole different thing. Yeah, it was like, ah. Uh... And then as far as the whole uh, proficiency thing, I've, I've been playing actual dance games like DDR and ITG and Pump pretty much alongside of the whole time I've been playing Step Mania, so I got reasonably good at those games. I've got a couple of decent videos that I, I would you know, be happy to show to anybody who ever asked me about things. Oh man, I wish I, I kind of want to watch. I wish I could have got a video, because you'll probably understand that, uh, like, I've said this to a couple people and it goes over some people's heads, but you might be able to respect it a little bit. Um, do you remember uh, Zypher from Tadish? 
Oh man, good times. Yes. Like I could I could dual mat that. Um and uh I was at an anime Nebraskan. It was a while back. Uh I went to go ahead and dual mat it for a tournament and uh I sprung my ankle at the very end of it. I still got a double A, but I sprang my ankle on the last step. And it was terrible. I mean, I, I I don't have pictures of me doing the actual score, which is stupid. But I do have pictures of the super huge softball ankle I got. Because <laughs> that's the important part. Yeah. I mean, we, I think there's a picture of it on screen. Like, with me screaming in agony, either on my Facebook or somewhere around there. It, it was pretty funny. Battle scars, battle cries, vomiting, anything to show your, your <laughs> dedication. It's, it's, that's there. Yeah, and I remember starting out, it was like, uh, I used to have problems when I very first started playing. I came into DDR kind of late, and then I went back to the older ones, because I felt like the older ones were a little bit harder, um, especially the slower mixes, because the fast stuff was easier to grasp than the slower stuff, especially the stuff that had fixed slow, uh, scroll speeds, because uh, some arcade cabinets weren't unlocked. But I'm getting a little bit on a tangent there, so um, moving... On to that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let Deadbeat take these next couple ones. Yeah, um, so with all these music games you've played, uh, are there any you prefer, or do you tend to just stick with Lost Mania nowadays? In addition to, uh, um, Lost Mania, I absolutely love In the Groove, and actually, some people who are close to me actually know this. I have a cabinet in the basement of our townhouse, I have an actual dedicated In the Groove 2 cabinet in our basement. Dang. I think Zetron like wants to go visit you now. Yes, I do. <laughs> so yeah, whenever I, I I haven't been playing as much as I should be, being that we've got the cabinet here, but I've also been playing a lot just to train for the to the um, train for the World Cup. But in the groove has been something that's been with me for for quite some time, and I don't foresee myself stopping until for whatever reason the game disappears or I just don't have any accessibility anymore. I was so bad at in the groove though. I played yeah, it. The game, the game has transformed. When when the game first came out, it was you know really challenging. The, the the charts were just completely ridiculous for its time, and they were really technical, really draining. And now the players have just transcended what anyone would have thought was possible just a few years ago. It's absolutely insane. Not only that, they've always had really good visualizations for all their music too. That's one thing I did like about In the Groove. Like when you're playing on the cabinets, they usually had really nice visualizations. Like, some uh, DDR cabinets would have really cool visualizations for certain songs, but most you just get your 3D dancer and some stuff going around in the background, if you were lucky. <laughs> but, like, I, I swear to this day, all the... Like, I played... Uh, when I very first played uh, Candy on DDR... I'm sorry for going off on tangents, but I could really talk about this. Hey, um, I'd be the same way. Uh, <laughs> when I very first started playing DDR, I played it at this, like, in the middle of nowhere, um, campsite called Lost Valley Lake Resort, and they had the original Japanese candy song on that one. I don't remember which mix it was, but I swear, ever since I played that one, I can't find it anywhere else. I found cabinets that have that song, but it's not stepped the same way, and I don't know what it is. I've looked it up online and it's like, no, the steps have always been this. And I, it could be chalked up to just, I was too young and I'm just forgetting it. But like my legs always want to go to that side and it's not there. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, um, go ahead, Debbie. Sorry about that. I was going to say, I wish I could add something to this, but I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, well, you might not be able to say you've played, like, the dance cabinets or anything, but you got to have, like, some old arcade love. At least somewhere in your childhood, there's got to be some old arcade love. Maybe a House of the Dead machine or um, Time Crisis. Crisis. Time Crisis, yes. Time yes. Crisis! Yeah, okay, there see, there's something we can all agree on. <laughs> Time Crisis was amazing. I just got mad when they took out the uh, guns that actually recoiled. Way back in the day. Yeah, I completely remember that. In the first first two games, I think it was. Yeah, the guns actually recoiled. They had weights in the slides, and when you'd shoot it, it'd bounce back at you. That's the and, best feature ever. Yeah, and Player 2 had the shotgun, which was kind of bogus, because, I mean, you could use the shotgun for the um, uh, handgun and everything, but that thing had so much more kickback than the handgun. Nobody wanted to play with the shotgun. 
Like, they're like, no, I, I'm going to be so inaccurate. And that was, that was like the key. I mean, I, I thought that was what they wanted. You know, it's like, yeah, make the guns kick back. All these kids ain't going to be able to aim at stuff, right? And we're going to get more quarters. There's actually a uh, burger fuel about 20 minutes near where I live. And I'm pretty sure it still is a space invaded machine there. Oh, man. Wow. There used yeah. to be a Frogger at my subway. Like, what? original Frogger. Yeah, original at Frogger. Subway. At Subway. What? Yep. Back when I was living uh, in Chicago, we had this, uh, this this small little convenience store. It was called SNS Deli, and they actually had a Neo Geo cabinet where they had Bust a Move and Metal Slug 2. And oh my god, my childhood. Oh wow, Metal Slug. Such good times, and so oh. many quarters spent raiding the high scoreboards. I apologize, Debbie. Uh, that's a little bit. Uh... A Subway is a chain of fast food restaurants in the United States. Oh, I know what Canada. Subway is. I go there every oh. time I go to work. I'll ask you, oh, why okay. was it at Subway? I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it makes I, no I, sense. Like, no, my arcade Subway's always had a... Subway <laughs> my Subway's always had an arcade cabinet. If it wasn't like Frogger, it was Pac-Man. And if Frogger was down, uh, or Pac-Man was down, they had a Donkey Kong cabinet too. I think it was because originally in that building complex... The building across from it was an arcade, and they were like, "Well, if you're shutting down, <laughs> might as well <laughs> give us your cabinets. We'll buy them from you." I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. And I mean, that place used to have like the old uh, Nintendo cabinets, like where you could play Super Mario Brothers three and Contra and stuff like that. I'm thinking I don't know what Subway is. I'm sure. sorry. <laughs> All right, let's say we move on to that next question, Deadbeat. I apologize for not thinking you knew what a subway was. This is just going to be like one tangent episode. Like, everything is just going to go off into something completely obscure. <laughs> um, but yeah, what kind of setup are you using at the moment to play Osmania? Uh, right now, actually, um, it's I'm just using my laptop. I'm not using anything else. Now, not to uh, be mistaken, I do actually have a mechanical keyboard, and I use that for training because I have blue switches, and a lot of people know that blue switches are the heaviest, so they take a little bit more practice. But through this entire World Cup, I've been playing just on my laptop keyboard and nothing else. Yeah, I did actually see that uh, picture that went around the Twitch chat. Yeah, that was my wife. She she took a picture behind me while I was doing the uh, map pool showcase. Hey guys, guess what? Elegant's married. Boom. I yeah, I just don't understand why you think that's such a big deal. I Like, a couple days ago, not like in a bad thing, obviously, but a couple days ago, like, Deadbeat messages me before we get the 100% okay that we're going to interview Halogen, and he's like, did you know he's married? And I'm like, well, no, but that's cool. <laughs> and he's just like, wow. It's like you don't imagine that there could be a, what Didn't Roll get married while he was around? No, he got married after he left. Oh, after he left? Well, I guess marriage in O.S. is something that's a little bit strange. It shocked Deadbeat, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and two kids. I think Deadbeat knows that, too. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I think Both that's daughters? awesome. Both, yes. Four and yeah. two. That's awesome, because, I mean, while he's still living his life and doing what he's got to do, he's still able to ha be passionate about a hobby. That's great. Yeah, no, I, I don't get me wrong. I think it's really awesome. It's just like, whoa. Did not yeah. see that coming. Yeah, Oh man, we got some funny, we got some jokesters in the chat at the moment, but uh, all right, let's see. I here. am now being Just... reported for having a life. <laughs> for shame, good sir, for shame. All right. But um, just continue on with that question. Uh, have you ever wanted to try to play with more like authentic style controller or anything? So uh, what exactly would you consider to be an authentic controller then? Well, for in this case and scenario, I'd say because this kind of follows more of, like, I mean, yeah, this kind of plays like a DJ Max to a degree. It doesn't follow it 100%. It follows it more like, uh, I guess, uh, maybe a I 2DX say? controller, maybe. Yeah, I'm I'm wanting to lean towards 2DX. And I think honesty, people are actually using 2DX controllers to play many already. Honestly, if I had a 2DX controller, I would be using it for 7 key because I it, it, it's just really weird for me to play on a keyboard. Yeah, I could imagine so. Speaking of actually playing on 7 key, so you play 4 key obviously. You just said you play 7 key. What about any other key modes? Or is it just the two of them? Um, I actually just started uh, getting into 7 key. I mean, I've been primarily 4 key for a very, very long time. And my... 
my interests in a couple of other games. There were a couple of websites that had gone on. Another one's Key Beat Online. They had a lot of six key stuff. And Feel the Beats, of course, a lot of people know that has seven key. But I've played everything from four to eight key. I'm not proficient past six key, though. I attempted to try one, two, and three key. <laughs> I, I've, I've played a couple of one key maps. Those were those were interesting times. I haven't played any two or three key though. Two would be fun. Uh, it's like Tycho, sure but not. <laughs> Actually, yeah. wait, I haven't played three key on Osmania, but um, I've played three key in Pop and Versus mode. That was a uh, kind of fun. <laughs> you know, something that I really liked. Um, I was about to kind of get into pop and music there for a second. Um. I'm really bad at Mania. Like, 4-key, it's like home. I can do that. Anything above it, it's just like, nope, hands don't want to cooperate with me. Um, I mean, I could play 5-key to an uh, extent, I guess, if you want to call it that. But the way I play it is I, I still play with arrow keys. Um, so Old school. Yeah, I'm, I'm old and rusted. But I still play with the arrow keys, so my fifth key is just my space bar, and it's literally with my other hand. Everything else is played with uh, my right hand, and then my center key is just my entire left hand. Four key plus one. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really like five key because it's so disconnected. But, I mean, it's still fun. I, but I find games like Pop and Music and Juby incredibly easy, and I, I wish there was, like some awesome way to map something to a Juby controller because like one of the biggest things I hear from my friends when they see me play it on the iPad or anything is they're like how can you read that it's all <laughs> coming in at once so about Juby actually there's an arcade up in New Jersey 8 on the break they recently just got a Juby cabinet and I got oh. to try Juby for the first time and so did my wife actually and uh, uh, yeah, she embarrassed me. I am god awful at Juby. She's actually kind of good at it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think I'd be too good at it at first, but then I kept on playing it on the phone. Um, I did get a chance to play on a friend's like emulated cabinet. I, I wouldn't say it's like a hundred percent cabinet. Um, definitely, he built it himself. I'm not exactly sure where he got the stuff before people messaged Props. me. How, you know how how to do that, but. Uh, I know he spent over like four grand on the touchscreen for it, like so that was fun. Um, but it's like ridiculously fun, and like I can do the hard ones. Like I feel like I'm actually good, good at something when I play GB because like Flower, any of the ten extremes, I'm pretty good at them. I can get double S's. I can't get the triples yet, but that's because like. I know that the method I'm using right now, I, I kind of slide more than I actually tap. So when sliding, you can kind of hit it a little bit too early and then you're just kind of boned. <laughs> and it, it makes it a whole lot harder. But the real, real cabinets, I like them because they're each individual button. I feel like that would make it easier. Um, but getting off that tangent, so you actually didn't take part in the Mania World Cup last year. What got you so inspired to join it this year? Ah, actually, okay, so there's actually a little bit of an interesting thing about this. I actually did join the World Cup on the U.S. team, but I ended up backing off because uh, I don't know who the previous captain was. I can't remember their name anymore, but they had a really, really harsh schedule in terms of practices that I just could not meet. So I ended up telling them that I couldn't participate. And the really interesting thing about this too is I ended up catching one of the streams for the World Cup that year. And I actually put in the chats that I had the opportunity to play, but ended up backing off. And some people gave me hate for it. I was actually a little surprised. Well, believe it or not, there's usually quite a few people that wish to take part in the World Cups, but due to either like uh, rank restriction or there's not enough people in their country to form a team, they're not able to. So there are some people that get a little bit on the salty side when it comes to like hearing people being able to do it and then not doing it. But obviously they didn't want to listen to the reasons beforehand, but I mean, come on, it's Twitch chat. At that point, you just kind of got to accept it. They're probably going to yell and scream at you. Memer's going to meme. Exactly. Um, so, see Zip was actually in your last year. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, we kind of touched base on the seven key playing. Uh, do you think with practice you'd ever consider uh, joining the seven key bracket as well? 
With practice, absolutely. Uh, in the upcoming event, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Better get that practice in. Yep. You don't want to. You don't want to go in there like guys shattering records and doing super awesome. In uh, four key, gets to seven key, and he just lets the team down. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that, it's like, that would that would be scary. Four key, it's like, yeah, woohoo, five star maps, six star maps, let's do it. Seven key, I'm like, okay, I can barely do three star maps. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Where's the two star? I need the two star. Further down, further down. All right. Um. So, um, when you were approached to um uh, take part in the commentary for this year's 2015 uh, four key bracket, were you excited? Were you nervous? What kind of things were going through your head when they asked you to help? I, I know it was kind of last second, too. Uh, surprised at first. Uh, I was a little bit nervous only because I was st I'm still somewhat. I won't say now because I've gotten a little bit more attention because of the uh, World Cup. But before the World Cup, I was still kind of slowly getting into the community a bit. People were just slowly starting to notice me. And with that, I didn't know too many people. So yeah, it was a little nerve wracking at first, but now that I've actually gotten in and had the chance to commentate multiple matches, it's actually a really, really fun time. I absolutely love it. All right, two things quickly about that. One, I am so grateful and so happy that you're in the commentating booth with us. <laughs> it's you. made everything so much easier. I'm and really, the, really um, glad to hear that. <laughs> You have no idea how much it's made us it is easier. Oh my god. So much not easier. To mention, not to mention it definitely uh, having a few extra commentators this year definitely helps because, uh, you know, unforeseen things happen all the time. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so, sometimes sorry, we can't Z control it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's cool. I'm not worried about it. It's just I'm glad that it like didn't completely go kaboom. Um, the other thing I wanted to quickly say is, sorry Zetrot, um, did you actually put your name forward for commentating, or did Zetrot just like pull you out of the crowd and go, yo dude, get in here? I think it was Lockjaw that pulled him out of the crowd. Maybe. Or someone. I had expressed some slight interest in wanting to do it, and actually I think it was Zach who ah. might have brought it to Lockjaw, and then it got brought to, um, I got asked to do it, and I was really grateful for that. Cool. Yeah, I think people were actually going to Zach about, like, I want to do commentating, how do I do it? And the entire yeah. time I was like, why are people going to Zach about this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's alright. I mean, Zach's probably the most approachable, because, I mean, he's, you know, like, pretty decent player. He talks around a lot in the CTB, probably talks a lot in the forums. You know, it's not somebody that's, like, you know, going around and doing all the community events. Like, it's the same kind of principle that, like, you'll ask an associate before you go and ask a manager or something like that, you know? Or you'll ask um, the white shirt guy instead of asking the red shirt guy. And a nice thing, too, for, for me at least with regards to Zach is I actually knew Zach from Flash Flash Revolution. You guys touched on that a little bit earlier because oh, really? I was a staff member over there. And so I had communicated with Zach just through regular forum posts even. So when I, when I heard that Zach had somewhat of a lead-in, I tried to kind of nudge myself somewhere that way. I, hey, I want to get on this train. Let me on. <laughs> Let me on. <laughs> I was actually just uh, reading the chat, and apparently one crystal was saying that uh, he was also taken in by Lockdown for the commentating, so... Yeah. Well, Juan, yeah, it basically, yours was a little bit more agreed on in terms of it. It wasn't like we said we need somebody really active in Mania, and then... Uh, I'm pretty sure said Lockjaw said, "Well, what about Juan?" And I'm like, "Well, is he good?" Like, and he's like, "Oh yes, yes, yes. He's done m multiple tournaments. All this. He's like, all you need to do is say the word, and I'll put put him here with you guys." And I'm like, "Okay, if he's cool with it, you know." And boom, then it happened. Who is Juan? <laughs> I'm sorry. One crystal. One crystal. Okay. All right then. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, have you actually been enjoying the commentating? Oh, I absolutely love it. It's been a blast. Well, I, I think it's pretty safe to say Twitch Jet loves you as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, do you have any long-term goals in your uh, stay in O's? Is there anything you're really aiming for? 
Yeah, there's a there's a couple of things that I want to do aside from being a really good player. Um, and this probably takes off of the fact of, of what my standing was in, in um, FFR, where, where I was kind of a staff member. But I really want to become a lot more active in the uh, beat mapping process because I do lots of content. Or I did lots of content on that other game on FFR, and I, I make beat maps now. I just haven't gone through the ranking process much. It's a little tougher to get through. It's a little bit more arduous, in my opinion, personally. Yeah, um, it's definitely, um, it's seen better years. Um, now, I don't want to go too much into that because there's a lot of stuff going on around that area, but uh, I will say that things are going to get a whole lot better really soon in terms of how difficult it is to get something through and yada yada this, that, and the other. Things soon are TM. changing. Yeah, the soon TM, it has been noticed. And yeah. I mean, it's kind of healthy for someone else that's not inside the box to kind of point it out as well. Cause I mean, some people have been trying to like point at it like, Hey, this is no, not good. You got to do something. And then nobody wants to do anything. And then it kind of just sits there. But luckily things have been improving. Um, I don't know if people have noticed, but there's not nearly, uh, we literally have the amount of disqualifications we've had. Um, well, dang near halved. It, it's not nearly as bad as it was within a few weeks' time. Hey, it's all about improving, you know. Find the system, make sure it works, and then when it's tested to be tried and true, then, you know, just roll with it. Mm-hmm. And that, that's kind of pretty much how it's been going. Uh, like, people don't realize, and we've said this multiple times, but the new ranking system that's been being used is something that was a test, and we've gotten the data from the test, and, the results are in, folks, but we still need a little bit more time. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, completely understandable. Yep. So moving on from that, uh, I'm going to kind of twist this question a little bit because it's a little bit Deadbeat-esque. Um, oh, yeah. So how are you doing with beat mapping? You said that you used to be a large content creator in uh, FFR, so um, with what you've learned from there, have you been using that as kind of a stepping stone for what you're going to make here? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, one of the things that I've absolutely come to love about about this particular game, about Mania, is that unlike FFR, which you don't have too much freedom in terms of expression because you don't have long notes, which I've, my goodness, there's, there's this stigma about Step Mania players and long notes and them not being friends and whatnot. Let me tell you something. When it comes to mapping, I've become extremely abusive of them, and I absolutely love it, and I don't regret anything. Aw, oh, man, I love holds. The only thing I feel like we're missing is freezes. I need me some freeze. I mean, I know you can do it to an extent, but not like a perfect freeze. You're, um, uh, you're holding it in place for a moment. That's about as far as you can get with um, like... Uh, what they allow you to do in the editor now. I mean, there's some ways to get freeze notes, but they're not very nice. <laughs> yeah, you've got to go leaps and bounds to get that to work properly. Yeah. There should be a nice little checkbox. It's like, do you want this hold to be a freeze? Yes, please. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, <laughs> if um, the maps you've been making been like um, imports or like maps from other game modes, or have you been trying to make your own stuff? I had a couple when I first came into the community that I had for different games I was basically making stuff for, but I actually started making a couple of maps that are very specific to Osumania now, because it's all I play now. I've pretty much dropped all of the other rhythm games I've played and pretty much become Mania Primary, which is great. Sweet. But yeah, I've got a couple of uh, of pretty good maps in store. I, I, I don't use the Mania editor. I think there's a couple of other people who map Mania who um, do the same thing, but they use another external program because they came from the Step Mania community, so they use D-Dream Studio. And I'm, I'm one of those people because, you know, waveforms, more precise syncing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's a way to convert that stuff into the game and make it work, so that's nice. Do you think you'll ever try one of the Mania beatmapping competitions? I may or may not be working on this one, Shifty Eyes. Ooh. Sorry. All right. So, um, with uh, the whole mapping and stuff, have you ever considered taking on the modding aspect and teaching new players how to map Mania mode? 
Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I've, I've done a couple of mods in the past. Uh, I got a little bit tired of doing it only because my mods were beyond detailed and it took me a ridiculous amount of time between trying to acclimate myself with, uh, with the editor and actually giving out the notes that I want. But uh, yeah, I definitely do want to get involved with modding and at the end, maybe an end goal of sorts would become <clears throat> would be to become a beat map nominator in the future. Oh wow, these parts are quite lengthy. All right, um, so our next question is a little bit on the dark side, but not the dark really. Side. Well, not really too dark, but it's like, uh, do you feel that you'll continue to enjoy us for years to come, or are you just kind of passing through and along for the ride? See, it could be dark depending on how you answer. If you'd had asked me this question, I would say 10, 11 months ago, I would have just said that I was in for the ride. I actually had started playing Mania before, but for whatever reason, my head wasn't in the right mindset and I got extremely frustrated trying to play the game. And I ended up leaving for quite some time. Um, and then I came back and I started having a lot more fun with the game. I ended up being a part of a Skype group and we were all just enjoying it. And now I think it's pretty safe to say that I'm going to be here for quite some time. I don't foresee myself leaving this community anytime soon. Excellent. Yay, no, it's all sunshine and bubblegum. Congratulations. Sunshine, bubblegum, and rainbows. You're now stuck here forever. <laughs> yep, now you can never leave. We've got you trapped. Fine by me. Alright, and for our last question here before we give it off to the few people that are here to ask... Oh, Edgy, I want to ask something else just after this one. Alright, he's got one more for you after this. Um, If you can be at a professional level with any other game mode in OS, would it still be Mania? I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to be very wise here and say I'd like to be pro in Mania only if it allows me to be pro at all of the key modes. <laughs> there you go. If, that, if you that, had to pick is... one, yeah, if you had to pick a game mode to pro that's not Mania, what one would you pick then? I'm sorry, can you say that again? If you had to be pro at one other game mode, not Mania, which one would you pick? Standard, no question. I've Oop. watched so many standard replays. I mean, I might be a really avid Mania player, but I've seen some of the the crazy, crazy... Um, plays from like for example I i'm pretty sure almost everyone knows rrytui's mafalda insane dt yeah or gangsta dt and i watched that and i'm like oh my god what in the ever loving hell is going on <laughs> yeah Waruchi's a bit of a monster yeah a bit, a bit? Yeah, just we'll a bit just a bit we'll just go with a bit i mean he also didn't need to also double S the big black like it wasn't even. I mean, he took like a thousand sides on it, but it's. A thousand? Really Try double that. Oh, yeah, it was like <laughs> 2,000 something, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's around 2,300. I'll check that actually. That is determination with a capital D. <laughs> Alright, though. Um, While we wait for Deadbeat to get that checked out, yeah. Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> what is it? 2,723. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, wow, wee. okay. No, he almost hit the 3k mark on that one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway, right. I was gonna ask a few more things about the Mania World Cup just before we hand it over. Um, what have, you, what have you thought about it so far? Have you enjoyed it? It has, without a doubt, been the most fun I've had playing any sort of keyboard, um, keyboard-based VSRG. I've never had the chance to actually you know, be in a, a rhythm game where you can join this tournament where you're competing against every other country, or not every other country, but a large amount of countries in a stage where lots of people get to watch you and it's done live. I mean, you have one shot, you've got to prove yourself against another country, you've got to show what you're made of, and it's really, really cool. Speaking of showing what you're made of, let's slam this down right now. You and Japan, this weekend, who's going to win? Oh no, I I don't want to be I don't want to be answering that now. I'm not sure yet. Who's it gonna be? <laughs> Gotta be one of you. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, the way that I see it here, I could answer either which way. But I will say this: it to me, it doesn't even matter who wins in the semifinals match because I very strongly believe at the end of the day, it's still gonna be USA and Japan in the grand finals, regardless. So, yep, I'm, I'm okay with that level of smack talk. We're good here. Yeah, the, st <laughs> the stage is probably set for what 
Like, if you got, if the United States makes it to the grand finals, like, that will be, like, monumentum. We've never actually won, I don't think. Well, I mean, Did you we guys already, like, you guys already destroyed Japan, uh, Korea, so, I mean. Yeah. I actually didn't think Korea would get destroyed that badly. I really didn't. I will no. say this, based off of uh, just looking at the maps, um, I'm pretty confident as to how I'm going to do on a good majority of the maps, so I guess that's really good to have in this upcoming semifinal encounter. But with Japan's team, you just don't know. They're they're really strong. Yeah, this it's is gonna be good. Be yeah, it's definitely gonna be something to look forward to on the weekend, guys. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move this over to our little bit of community questions that we have. Um, so if anyone does have a question, please uh, let us know. We'll let you uh, speak it in the channel if you want, or you could just type it out. Just go ahead and get those out as soon as you want. And we've got one from Tasha, so we're going to go ahead and give the floor to Tasha. Uh, hey, Halogen. Um, so I have a question regarding the different com uh, communities you've actually been in for um, Rhythm Games. Out of all the communities that you've been in, uh, what would you say, this is a bit of a loaded question, but what would you say was the one that was your favorite and why? I'm going to say, or I'm going to let was be a very operative term here because I really, really loved the Flash Flash Revolution community. But as of late, I, I, I will say as of late, but it was more like April, maybe May. I just, I got fed up. And keep in mind, this is coming from somebody who's probably a little bit more jaded now because I'm an ex-staff member. I let go myself. But there was a lot of history to be had there. A lot of really, really good players materialized. There were a lot of friendships made over there. And I still think I have a lot of enjoyment in regards to that. Awesome. That was my question. All right, and uh, we also have one, well, two from Juan Crystal. Um, so we're gonna go ahead. And, uh, yeah, two for one, and we're two gonna for. go ahead and give him talk power now. Oh, he's already got it. Oh, oh yeah. way ahead of you. How are you doing, Halogen? Doing good, Juan. How about yourself? Uh, I'm just fine. I just came back from the stadium, and I am okay. <laughs> So, uh, about the question, the first question that I wanted to ask is what are your favorite pit maps of 4Key? Oh man, there's a lot. I've, I've gotten so many beat maps for 4Key over the past couple of months. Um, God, I can't even pick any in particular. I will say this, I actually, um, when the tiebreak came out for the, oh. the, I believe it was the quarterfinals, was that Lunatic Rough Party? Yeah. Or, Oh my goodness, I fell in love with that map almost immediately. That was awesome, that's true. That map is really fun. Actually, I, I, there's a lot of really good maps for a lot of uh, good reasons. I think for me it's easier to actually toss out a couple of beat mappers as opposed to specific beat maps because I've come to like the style of a couple of beat mappers now after playing a lot of their stuff. Like I've slowly started to come to liking Ichigaki, uh, Full Arena of course. Huh. Um, and as of recently now, Sonata Yukimura, I believe their name is. Some really good maps. And uh, I can't forget about Starry, of course. You know, somebody just mentioned um, Anemone, and I mean... Gigadelic. Yeah, Gigadelic and Overcomplexification. This yeah. round is really, really fun. There's there's a lot of beat maps. It's, it's really hard to answer that question on the spot. Yeah, there's a lot of, of good maps out of there. And mania the is other... evolving. It's mania yeah. evolving in terms of content. People are getting really good at what they do, and as a result, a lot of good playable content's coming. Mhm. Mm I wanna do more mapping thing in this month. I hope I got some time. But well, about the second question is, if you ever played some Voltex, or if you wanna play that. I have not, and yes, I wanna play it very badly. <laughs> We all want a whoosh whoosh. I I have been wanting to play some Voltex for a very long time, and I've not had the chance to do it. I also want to try it, but I don't have a control. So expensive. We just need Zach <laughs> here. We're going to entire commentating booth. Uh, I think that's it. So. All right. Let well, thank you for the question, Juan. And uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and get to our last one here uh, from Sulker. And then uh, I guess we'll be wrapping this one up. 
So, Halogen, you said that you have, you like, well, you're the only one here that has a life, but... Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> that house gonna I'm, be, huh? I'm a bit curious, do you have, like, do you ever bring your wife into Osu, or, like, your kids, or any of your family <laughs> members? I'm like, I'm curious! I'm actually glad you asked that because when the discussion about Flash Flash Revolution came up and I didn't mention my wife, she actually got a little bit mad at me because that's actually how we met. Oh, so. that's kind of a big oh, thing, you know, yeah. the shame, shame, shame. <laughs> Good job. Um, and actually, she was just talking to me just right behind me. Um, she was saying like, oh, you've got to get me through to um, showing me how beatmap uploading works and stuff. So yeah, I think she actually wants Ooh. to get into it because she oh. actually knows how to make beatmaps herself. Or she knows how to too. Competitive, yes. Bring on the fights. So. Mapping <laughs> fights. But yeah, um, yeah, she, she's actually very much into rhythm gaming herself. She, she plays in the groove. She plays, or she she tries on occasion to play Flash Flash Revolution or Step Mania once in a while, but she's suffering slightly from uh, tendonitis, unfortunately. Ah. Oh. Uh. Well, at least she doesn't have RSI, so. Kayla, what else do you want me to say? <laughs> uh, no. Well, at least you're met for each other, so. Yeah. Yep. But uh, thank you for that question, Sulker, and. I hate Almost you. missing out on that, like, super big insight. Wait, what? <laughs> I hate you, Sol, bro. What? You're so rude. So <laughs> rude. Is it not my fault that no one has a life when they play Osu? <laughs> I mean, oh, man. wow. Forever, I mean... That, geez. I mean, I've been uh, here for, like, Osu three years. Osu is the life. You don't need a, you don't need a <laughs> yeah, life when you have Yeah, you don't need a there life after go. playing Osu. I mean, like, I've been here for three years, and yeah, Osu is kind of priority right there. Us is oh, love, man. us is life. Uh, I don't even know. I, I guess that's a good way to end the episode. Like, just brainwash, all the, <laughs> just brainwash all the young children. Us is love, us question. is life. Oh, go for it, go for it. Okay, so, uh, Halo Jim, um, when you first got, uh, got started playing, like, Flash Flash Revolution and, you know, any kind of uh, vertical rhythm games like that, who was your uh, inspiration into like actually playing, or did you just like decide I'm gonna play rhythm games one day? Like, was there anyone that was really inspiring for you to play, or for? Yeah, you get the idea. Oh, I'm sorry. When I had first started, I actually didn't even know too much of anybody. I mean, this was a very, very long time ago. We're talking when it came to keyboard play. My first exposure to it was December of 2004. I think that's when my FFR join time was, and. The only reason I even found the game is just because I randomly went on the internet one day and uh, curiosity got the best of me and I typed the words DDR online and the first thing that popped up was Flash Flash Revolution. And That's then from better. there, I started playing it a little bit more. I didn't really know anybody, um, you know, I just was just doing it all on my own. I made an account, started tracking scores, and then about... A couple years later, I started actually getting into the community. I started seeing some really good Stepmania players, um, people like Dynamo, Laggy. These are, you know, specifically Stepmania people. Um, and I started to dick. get like there. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. I just had to get that out there. Oh, sorry, Jubo. Oh, okay. Jubo. I don't love you no more. You're not sorry. No, I'm not. not. At all. I helped with like I helped with all the packaging and padding of the Otaku Dream fucking packs, and I never got any credit for it. Oh wow, that was no kidding! Oh my goodness. Yeah. So like yeah, <laughs> fuck Jubo. <laughs> <laughs> like straight yeah. up, don't even censor that one, Deadbeat. I want that there. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I want to continue. Aside from that, go ahead, Deadbeat, with your question. Yeah, I was gonna ask one more, and then we'll probably wrap this up. Um, earlier we were kind of having a bit of a nostalgia fest with like really old-style arcade games, excluding mm. rhythm-based ones. What would you say is your favorite? Bust a move. Ooh. I love you right Bust now. Bust a move. I freaking love you right now. <laughs> bubble bobble. Bust a move. Bubble bobble. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, both of those games. And oh, if we want to go even even further back, I actually, um, I was a really, really big fan of, I mean, we're going even further back than that, but I used to love playing Galaga. Oh. And yeah, now I'm really starting to drive the nostalgia train there. Oh, 
now you know what? We need to play a game sometime because I think space we have Harrier similar tastes. Was one of my favorites. <laughs> Which like, one? Space Harrier, and that yes. was with the. Uh, and I had I was luckily fortunate enough to have the arcade cabinet where you got to actually carry the gun. Well, like you didn't get to carry carry it. It was on the it was on the movable rack, and how you moved your character was leaning that huge cannon up, down, left, right, stuff like that. And welcome to the family team. Get ready. Will be burned into my head for all eternity. <laughs> well, hi, Katie. Trudy. But um, uh, I do believe we've got almost everything wrapped up here. Debbie, did you get to your question? I'm sorry, we broke off on tangent again. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're good, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Halogen, for coming out. Uh, we yeah. do appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Not a problem at and all. Thank and you and, uh, for the spec talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. And we'll see you all during the weekend during um, uh, the semifinals of the World Cup. And uh, USA. 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 Hype. USA. Get hype. Yeah. And um, uh, also, we'll probably see you guys again for the talk maybe in a week or so. So until then, <laughs> remember, rhythm's only a click away, and we'll see y'all real soon. Or like, you know, tomorrow or the day after. Something like that. Yeah, soon. Et cetera.